Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Pure Mix Mix Fix. Uh, my name is not Fab Dupont. I am Mark, and this gentleman over my shoulder here, his name is Noah Bolte. See if we can get the camera there focus on it. There we go. Nice. Um, so Noah is from the Columbus-based band uh, Blue Cone, Columbus, Ohio, in the USA, and uh, he produced and started the mix on the song that we're doing today uh, called Synesthesia. And uh, joining us from the wonderful New York is Mr. Fab Dupont. Hello, Fab. What's up? <laughs> so, All right. So uh, Hi. you might notice that our layout's a little interesting today. Uh, we yes. are looking at Session Wire. Yes, we are. are. Yeah. So today is the uh, beautiful day because I am very proud to announce that as of, well, technically as of last week, but this is official today, um, any Pure Mix Pro subscriber has access to Session Wire Pro. Not only that, but any Pure Mix Pro subscriber has access to Session Wire Pro and can log into Session Wire Pro with their Pure Mix credential, full SSO, single sign-on for those of you who are not internet nerds. and. Every Session Wire Pro subscriber now has full access to Pure Mix. Isn't that wonderful? It's nice. Um, and the reason for that is because about a year ago, I started working with Session Wire. Um, I work with a team in Canada. They're in Toronto. I'm in New York. And uh, we meet once a week on Friday to um, go over the song they wrote that week and then do the feedback on it and produce together and stuff. And it was always a pain in the butt. Uh, you had to have FaceTime, then if you maybe use audio movers or Zoom with the Zoom Pro audio thing. And it, it never really worked. It's always been a pain. So when I discovered Session Wire, uh, and I'll show you why I like Session Wire. When I discovered Session Wire, we moved to Session Wire and we've been using Session Wire since. And then since then, I've integrated Session Wire in my workflow because I work with a lot of Lat Latino um, bands or French bands, for some reason, I don't know what the French bands. Uh, and so, um, so this has been a great way for me to finish mixes while my, uh, the artist is maybe on tour on the other side of the world and they can, they can work with me, we can work in real time. So I'm gonna show you a little bit how that works. So after a year of, of using that, I reached out to the, the Gaza Session Wire and I said, hey, you know, we have this uh, Pure Mix plugin suite and technically Session Wire is not a plugin, but I think it would be really nice if we could have Session Wire for pro subscribers. And they said, yes. Um, so that's it. You are now uh, the, the proud owners. If you're a Pure Mix Pro subscriber, which you should be really, it's a really great status. Um, then you know also a Session Wire Pro, so double pro, stereo pros, my favorite kind of pros. Um, let me show you a little bit why I like this. And then we're gonna, we're gonna mix Noah's song, and this is a surprise. So, another surprise. Uh, so, oh, and Fab, if you want me to click around the interface, let me know since we're looking at my screen share. Uh, no, you know when I screen share, my, oh well, if I screen share mine, you're gonna have uh, the infinite me, me, me. Yeah, me, yeah. Be like uh, not that much fun. Okay, so um, what you're looking at right now is the the most the session wire. It's the studio. The thing that I like the most about this, one of the things, well, yeah, I do love this, is that, you know, when you meet someone and you say, hey, I'll meet you at Flux Studios, you go to Flux Studios. Cool. Uh, when you do a Zoom call, you say, hey, I'll send you a Zoom link, right? And every time it's a different link. And every time you spend the first five minutes going, can you hear me? Uh, and now, how about now, can you hear me? And how about now, can you hear me? So with Session Wire, it's different. You go, you're coming to my studio right now. You're in my studio and it's always the same link. I can send a link to the people I want to work with. And it's the same link. It's like going to a studio. So in my studio, that is really awesome. Second is browser based. So I'm right now running in, in Chrome or Brave or whatever. Um, you don't need an app. It's, it's browser based. So that's great. Third, um, if you look uh, at the bottom, you'll see there's a little microphone, a little camera and a little red squiggly, um, which I'm sure it has an official name for the session where people, I just don't know what it is. Uh, so the microphone is for talkback. Obviously, the camera is for camera, and you can 
see my camera. And then the squiggly is for the HD audio. So what Session Wire lets you do is it lets you combine talkback, video, and live stream of HD audio into one app. And that's pretty awesome. The other thing is if you have the mixer open, this is the nerve for me of the whole thing. What makes it truly special is that it has an audio mute system based on a talkback. So if I speak to you right now and Mark is speaking to me, it's like we were basically on either side of the glass on a regular recording studio. It really feels that way, right? Um, and in a recording studio, we would mute the talk back if we press play. Here, it's automatic. So when I press play, and I'll show you in a second, when HD audio goes through the interface, it will automatically mute the talk back, which means you don't hear the music both through the microphone, the talk back microphone, and the actual music. It's all taken care of. And that's really, really changes the flow on any session if you're going to do remote. Also, this is peer to peer, meaning I'm talking directly to Mark's computer, so it's safe. And also, we can invite other people to this very call very easily, and they'll hear the HD audio. All that is, and it, these are all little details that put together make for a very good experience. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to get rid of I'm going to move this to a separate window so you don't have to have the infinite loop um, of doom of uh, screen sharing and then I'm going to share my screen and you're going to discover the second surprise uh, uh, here we go I'm going to start a screen share and share and boom what <laughs> This, my friends, is a departure from our regular program. Um, so, Noah, the reason why I picked Noah's song is because I love the song. And I thought that the mix was really good, like almost there. And like with a few tweaks, we could get there. And then I learned that it was in Fruity Loops. Uh, sorry, I'm not supposed to say Fruity Loops, FL Studio. Um, I did not know that when I picked the song and I was like, oh, okay. Um, so we had two options. We could have, um, and I, and I did ask Noah to export stems from this Fruity Loop session. But the thing is, is I really feel that the mix is very close. Um, and so starting from scratch in a different package would have been silly. But then again, I don't know Fruity Loops, sorry, FL. So. So whatever. So I bought FL and I learned it really quick. Uh, I learned the strict minimum. And I thought this is good because this is a little bit like going to a foreign country that, of which you, you don't know the language, right? So you learn uh, please, thank you, yes, no, and it wasn't me. And with that, you should be able to, to you know, survive streets to streets. Uh, trains are trains, planes are planes all over the world. Um, so this is pretty much the experience for me with FL Studio. It was like a track's a track most of the time. An EQ is an EQ. And it speaks to something that I get a lot of communication from you guys in my inbox, which is, oh, but you have this expensive gear and you know you have all this stuff and all these templates and all the stuff you know how to do and you have all the you know, all that, and, and, and yeah, but the reality is it doesn't matter. What matters is, is um, do, can you, what sound do you have in your head? So I thought I would put myself in the spot and, um, and just mix the song in Fruity Loops until I can't. We'll see. So I have the stems as a backup. I may succeed. I may fail miserably. Time will tell. Um, so this is, this is the Fruity Loops that is. And, um, also, we have Noah here as tech support in case I'm like, yo, how do you press play? You know, so, um, yeah, so I'm here we go. I'm actually going to swap chairs with Noah here and put him in the hot seat so you guys can chat All right. and do this. So, cool. so, so if, I, if I do something stupid, Noah, just throw something at me, okay? Uh, <laughs> I'm going to, yeah, remotely. Um, so here's the, um, let, let me give you a quick primer, guys. Let me give you a quick primer on FL Studio if you don't know it. It really is a production package. It's not necessarily aimed at mixing. Um, it thinks in mysterious ways. The, this is what they call the arrangement. 
Um, here on the left are actually audio files on the very left. Here are the actual, what we think of as Logic or Pro Tools or Luna users as tracks. And um, actually, most of the time, um, I'm told that uh, FS2 users don't even think about the mixer. The mixer is here, and it's very unconventional looking, very unconventional looking. Um, and because when you work in FL Studio, if you start from scratch in FL Studio, you just um, you just pull tracks. You don't really worry about a mixer because everything goes straight to the output, and you don't have to worry about it. It's very uh, track based or MIDI based. It's not at all console based, which is why it freaks a lot of engineers out. But in the end, you can make anything work with anything, right? So, uh, so what we have here is extremely simple and very efficient arrangement. And here we have the console that goes with it. And you'll see that it's, it's really interesting how it's done. Uh, you can click here to select a track. And once you select a track, on the right over here, you see the plugins that are on the track. And then down here, you see a little bit of routing with the little cables, kind of like um, Reason used to do, or Reason still does, if you look at the back of Reason. Uh, and and that, that's about it. The mute button's here. Uh, the solo button is actually right click on the mute button, which took me a while to find out. And everything else is pretty much what it is. Uh, this is the master, and there's nothing on the master. And this is Noah's exact mix because I made sure I had all the um, plugins uh, over time. And uh, well, let me play, play you the song. So for you to hear the song, let's go back to Session Wire for a second. Um, I need to feed the output of the DAW into session wire so that you all can hear it, so that Mark can hear it and then send it to you. And there is a, a plugin for that. And so if I insert on the master, I'm going to go here and I'm going to insert the session wire plugin. It's called session wire sand. And so what it does is it sends, hence the name, the uh, mix bus, which is the master, to the session wire interface, which chance broadcast it high res to um, everybody in your audience. Cool? Very, very simple. So, um, and I have an offset here. So if things get loud, I'm sure Mark will also throw something at me and I'll be able to pad um, here what I send to you all in the world. Okay, so let's go to the top of the song. I'm here, I'm gonna press play. And we're gonna hear, let's listen to the, let's listen to the top of the song up until after the first chorus. Cool, uh, just so you get the lay of the land. And this is Noah's exact mix. Hi, Sophie, my love, how are you? Um, Dad says that you were trying to call me. He says that you have a performance today, tonight, and I know you're going to do amazing. You are, don't worry about it, you just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart, okay? Awesome, right? Really great. great. And honestly, there's, to me, so the original idea is Noah sent this song to, to Mark to get mastered, right? And that, that is, is perfectly cool. And I'm sure Mark would have crushed it. However, not crushed it as in destroyed it um, dynamically, we crushed it and make it sound good. So I just want to be clear about that. that um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't crush things, do you? Nah. Uh, but... I think there's a couple things that could make this even better really quickly. And also, 
except if you're working with Mark, of course. It's always a good idea to send the person you, who's going to be after you in the chain the best possible thing you can do. So, and I think that there's a couple things here that need to be adjusted. Like, for example, I feel that the, um, the vocal is a little muddy, uh, just a little bit muddy. There's a little bit something going in the low mids. And in my world, low mids is in between 100 and 300. Um, there's something there that's just not, not, not as good as it could potentially be. Um, and the relationship between the bass drum and the 808 is, I feel, a little underexploited. Um, so, but the rest, honestly, is awesome. So I thought this would be a good thing to do with Noah online, using Session Wire, and uh, going in the wilderness of a brand new country I just landed in called FL Studio 21. Is that the version number? Yeah, that's the version number. Cool. cool. Um, and something that I think is also very interesting about this that I discovered between yesterday and today is that our, most of this, this track, is done mostly with free plugins, right? Free plugins and stock plugins, mostly. That's awesome. I think that's wonderful. So um, that's wonderful because to the tune of what we discussed earlier, uh, well, we were discussing, I was pontificating to you that um, it's not about, it's not about the equipment. The equipment's fun. You know, I like to pet gear. Um, and also for certain situations, it can be really useful, but these days, um, it is more like enhancement than bare necessities. You could do with a, the simple package and a bunch of amazing amount of free plugins that are there, you can do a lot and Noah did a lot. So the first thing I'm going to do here to add a little bit of shine onto this. So we have the ses session wire sand. Um, I am going to, so let me think about this for a second. The session wire sand is going to go here. I'm going to set up our trusted, I need to know where I am. And because I don't know the package and I don't know the, um, the lay of the land and I don't understand these meters whatsoever, um, I'm going to put our trusted decibel on just to understand what the dynamic range is on this thing as is. And I'm going to go to the chorus where it's loud. That's awesome. Like that's so, for lack of a better word, metrosexual in level. This is like what it should be. Um, I love it. Bananas, dude, this is great. I don't have to, I don't have to beat the demo. The demo is extremely, well, I'm gonna have to beat the demo, but I don't have to beat a loud demo. Um, this is awesome. I'm gonna get rid of the analyzer because that you had. Um, uh, look at this throwback, yo, that's awesome. Yeah. Love That's it. All I got. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. This is great. Well, now you're a premium subscriber. You have decibel. Um, and I venture to say, let's just say it's more modern. How's that? Um, okay, cool. cool. So I need this. I'm going to need, probably going to need a limiter. So I'm going to hold, hold off on that. But uh, we're going to set up mix up. And uh, because I want to be able to ref. And you sent me, oh, hi. Um, uh, mix up, uh, I'll find that password in a second. Um, you send me your mix, right? And it's in the archive. You just, you sent me this morning. Yep. Should be. You're so organized. Uh, let's see, uh, see a, a behind the scenes. Look at how I organize my shit. Uh, PMX live, boom, synesthesia, drum bus. It is not. A man of your quality and stature. <laughs> I thought I threw it in there. Uh, how about Mix Project 2023, yeah. June 18th? Yeah. Uh, how about the June 18th mix that I have in this older folder? Would that yeah, do? That, yeah, that should be the one. All right. There's no rush here since June. Hold on one second. Uh, so let me go back here and Mix Up is not logged in. Give me one tiny second. Yeah, we'll go full screen here so you can do your thing there. Thank you so. very much. That's Noah. Tell people about uh, Blue Cone where yeah. they can find you. Hey man, tell me yeah. about the band because it's pretty 
Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. What's going on? Who are you? So uh, we are Blue Cone. Uh, we're based out of Columbus, uh, and we've only been together for about, I'd say, about a year, year and a half. Um, mostly started just by uh, me and uh, my roommate, uh, who is now our bass player, just messing around in the studio, just having fun. Then uh, our drummer moved in with us, and then we kept making music, and we thought, you know what? This stuff is really good. We should find a singer. Found our lead singer, and then uh, started playing shows. That's basically that's just amazing. how it started. Yeah. So you got that is, that is awesome. Uh, the good yeah. thing that's most awesome is that you're roommate with a bass, bass player. player. Yep. And, and you invite a drummer in. To me, that's the sign that you're a good dude. You're a good dude. Um, all right, so um, I'm gonna create a uh, mix up stack and I'm gonna go fish for this mix right here. And we're gonna call it, well, that's good. I'm, we're gonna call it, so what's the name of the song? Uh, Synesthesia. Let's see if I, uh, I'm good I enough. Um, I still struggle spelling it. I just mash on my keyboard once I get that. <laughs> Um, let's see if I, if my first generation immigrant spelling is good enough for jazz. Here we go. So, um, oh, I didn't name it. I didn't, well, it's okay. Let me, um, let me go in here. So, um, this is your mix and, uh, this is going to be, uh, this is mix up. This is my, the current mix in the box. We are good to go. Um, all right. So I have mix up. I have the session wire sent so you can hear what I'm doing. I have decibel. So I know where we stand stand level wise um so now what i'm going to do so we can hear we can compare life is good um i am going to set up a um a mix bus compressor and i'm going to set up the rock hopper because i feel that um part of the what could be made better about this is just the density of it and more than just going and analyzing track by track, I feel that the density of the mix is what uh, betrays its uh, unfinishedness, if you will. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, to the loudest part of the song, which is the chorus right here, and I'm going to I'm going to use the rock hopper, which by the way you now have uh, Noah because you're a premium subscriber, and I'm going to set up. I'm going to set up to add density to the track. And to do so, I'm going to compress. And I'm going to show you what I'm going to do is I'm going to compress a lot. And then I'm going to back up a little bit by using uh, the uh, mix knob to do basically inline parallel compression. Um, so let me do that. It looks like my first FL Studio mistake. Um, I did not put it on. Oh, no. Mix up is on. Daw. Okay, cool. Great. One hundred percent. This is uncompressed. Without. With. Without. See the difference? It basically has this density and also it feels like the bass drum drops. And all it is is just a super crushed version of the mix, this. All right, let me turn it on. It works better on.
So that's clearly um, over the top. But if you just tuck a little bit of that to taste under the uncompressed mix, you are exact mix. You all of a sudden you have more density and it feels more, for lack of a better word, like a record. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to um, raise the side chain so that the bottom doesn't compress as much. So it still push as much, even more air in the bottom. So this is where I'm at right now. So, so, so simple. So we're good. Now I'm going to, and because we're on a live stream and we're explaining everything, let me find the vocal. It's here. Uh, right click. Yeah. Yeah. You got it. So, um, so I'm, let's listen to that vocal and uh, look at what you've done and try and see if we can optimize this a little bit. I can feel my anxiety fading by the way. Hear that you hear that little mask the mm, just just under like that's always there so you have a you high pass very very nice a uh, little bit of grit oh hi uh we have the focus right console and then we have another eq that means and look where you're having problems so you identified the problem you just didn't quite go all the way deesser which honestly i don't Think you need that much fast balancer i don't have that let's just mute that um rvox mono extra compression because why not and then two sands okay so i think we should probably look into this guy and uh the focus right come on focus right it's your turn okay great hi uh i feel that um well let's first I feel like the 300 range is where your problem is. I can feel my anxiety fading by the way. 2.6 to be precise. I'm going to cut that. I can feel my anxiety fading by the way. Nothing could be better than the days I break away. So that's already better. Um, just one move there, but I think that you had another one somewhere. TDR Nova. Hi. Um, and I imagine that this is usable. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little more heavy on this one because on the focus right, if I went more, it was too much, and I don't fully know that EQ. So I'm gonna use this one because I can see what I'm doing because we're mixing with our eyes today. Uh can feel my anxiety fading by the way nothing could let's check let's check this out in um in the context Okay, so now I feel that this is better, um, and but it's still missing some of that uh, shine and some uh, some of that saturation that uh, is expected in this vibe, right? And so you you did a saturation with a black box, which is cool. I love I love that thing, uh, but for vocals, the easiest, fastest way to get to that effect to me is the UAD eleven seventy six Rev A this guy um, and this guy is awesome check it out I can feel my anxiety fading by the way. Nothing could... without I'm gonna turn it back on and tweak it further. And 
that's the trick. Since you were so close, and it's very difficult. What do you listen on? I listen on M, M Audio BX eights. Okay, cool. And you know them super super well. Oh yeah, I've had them since I started making music. Okay, cool. That's a that's a that's, a, that's why your mix was almost there. It's because you really know your speakers. You know your room. Um, maybe your speakers are a tiny bit bright. Maybe a smidgen smidgen bright. And so it it doesn't push you into making things that's in your face because. If you make it really in your face and in your room, you're like, whoa. Right. But, uh, but I, I think that you did great and the balances are great. Uh, just here, there's a certain sound we all used to. And, um, and part of that sound is that sheen and that, that kind of like um, that transient that goes a little bit over the rest of the track. And one way to do that is to use this guy or a similar guy with a slower attack uh, so that it lets the transient through. So it basically makes that thing happen, which is I think is... I love it. Um, so that's that. Next, let me remind myself what the song is about. Oh, hi. Um, the, the window management is stunning to me in, the, in this software. I was, like, I was like, wow, this is amazing. Um, so um, I'm, I'm having fun because I can think only about, I have to think about the music really, really hard because I'm in, a for, I'm in very foreign territory. Uh, very, very foreign territory. So let's listen to the drums and um, and see what's up. I think that's I think that's great. Um, I feel that it needs a, a little bit of extra. Oomph, but I don't want to change the tones. I just want to give it more a mm, cojones. Uh, and so to do so, I'm going to uh, do add some parallel compression. And I learned how to do that. You select a track, and then you go to an empty track. They call them tracks. I'm going to choose number 48, for example. And I click on the bottom button here. And it's now you see the little cable coming in. And so now that track is being fed to this track. And on this track, number 48, I'm going to insert uh, R-Trusty 1178 uh, from Pulsar. Sorry, 1178. Um, and I'm going to add the uh, solo because uh, Footy Loops did not realize that this is what I wanted. Let me make sure that the drums are still soloed. Yes, and um, let's name it something intelligent, like, um, let's see, where do I name this? Here? Yeah, rename. Yeah, drum par. Awesome. Boom. Can I choose a color, or is that extra? Yeah, you can choose a color. Oh, I feel if special. You, if you click up to the right, uh, where like that little triangle looking thing is. Yep. There, there you go. go. Uh, uh, how about this spell? This very, very, very yes, I accept. accept this very dashing, dashing spell, spell green right there. there. Come on, yeah. yeah, it didn't quite do what I thought it would, but that's okay. Um, so let's um, let's set up the power compression. So I'm going to go with a fast release and a slow attack to get more. Be a little more. And I'm going to lower the return a little bit. Without. With. Ah. Wrong. See how it pumps a little bit? It's cute, right? So let's see uh, in the track.
that's the trick. And if I look at decibel, where are we right now? We haven't really compromised much, right? It's we still extremely still have your dynamic. It just has a little more um, ooh la la, as we say in France. Uh, so um, cool, rocking. Mark, do we have any questions from our uh, fearless audience watching me uh, explore the streets of a new country? Nothing yet, but um, yeah, definitely chat room. If you guys have things that you want to ask, uh, start putting the questions in there. Yeah, if you have Fruity Loops questions, just ask Noah because I have no idea. Um, <laughs> Uh, but he knows. He's good. Um, okay, so let's look at that 808. Uh, right click. I, I think this is really well managed. Uh, and I think it, it works good with the um, the rest of the track. And you have a bus here. There's nothing on the bus. It's just for you because you have two bases. Okay, got it. Uh, cool. Uh, let's just uh, listen to the whole thing again. Okay, I think this part this part works. Let's see how it feels uh, from the top. Hi Sophie, my love, how are you? Um, Dad says that you were trying to call me. He says that you have a performance today, tonight, and I know you're going to do amazing. You are. Don't worry about it. You just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart. Okay. To me, it feels that the the uh, uh, phone effect is awesome. It's just a little on the aggressive side. What was the name of that plugin? The the TDR plugin that, that has a dynamic EQ. Uh, TDR Nova. Nova. Cool. Um, I don't know which one you use. Um, right, let's try this one. Yeah, I think either one should work. Hi Sophie, my love. How are you? Um, that's doesn't seem to work. It, if you go to the top right of the plugin, you can just uh, change the visualizer to in. Uh, yep. I love you, this. You were right next to it. You go down a little bit. No, no. A more to the right. To the right, to the right. Down, down. Down, down. Oh, yeah. Yeah, right oh, yeah. yeah. Got, it. Got it. Why would that be the default? I uh, couldn't tell you what it is. <laughs> I guess, I guess for people who don't want to mix with their ears. Fair enough. Hi, Sophie, my love. How are you? Um, Dad says that you were trying to call me. He says that you have a performance today, tonight, and I know you're going to do amazing. You are. Don't worry about it. You just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart, okay? And just be yourself. These are awesome, and I think they're underutilized. Um, let's, um, this synths, they really rock. Uh, they're about here. Oh, hi. Um, it's just, hey, come here often. Here's, um, uh, by the way, just so you know, and everybody knows, this is an awesome, 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 awesome EQ. Uh, it does everything in Bruce Coffee. It solved world peace, but we just didn't hear about it. Here's the thing. It solves more world peace in natural phase. It really does. The zero latency is very practical, but it's not necessarily the best. So you got to give time, time, and you got to give Pro-Q3 time to do its thing. And so natural phase is better, just saying. Built-in reverb. I think it sounds bananas. Just, just see what I just did. You know, this is a piece of cake, 
There are two guitars going on right here, right? Yep. Sure cool. I think the bottom one is also a little, it deserves more of a form. Let's see. Um, And these are the various reverbs. Okay, this reverb comes in later with the lead guitar. So let's see what this did. There's an effect right here happening just at the um, at the moment where the track is bigger. Where is it? Like a swish. There it is. Hi, FX1. Where have you been my whole life? Check it out. Uh, let's go see this. FX1, you deserve to be heard. FX5. Who's FX4? That's is a, is friends of FX1, right? Uh yeah, I think I think FX4 is in the beginning and I did like some Oh, it's like it's, it's granville. Oh, yeah, you're right. Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh let's let's check that out. I'm sure it's going to work better on one second. Yeah. And you just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart. Okay. And just be yourself. You'll be fine. You see, okay, mommy, Tarita. And the other EQ that you saw that's built in that I don't have to go fish for. Uh, it's parametric EQ2. So you had the right thing, but it's EQ2. Two. Ah, two is better than one, obviously. Uh, so what I'm doing he here is I'm going to get rid of a little bit of the low mids so that you there's room for the other stuff. I want to hear that thing. I want to have its presence, but I don't want it to take over the whole bed. You know what I mean? Or the covers. So uh, I'm just going to do this. I, my gut is it's around here. And you just be yourself. Let me show you without. See, without the EQ, I feel it here. It's in the way here. It's just it's just in the way of the experience of the vocal. Uh, and so uh, without again, and then I click this one button here, and it'll be back on. With? But I have the, the the density of it, which is great. By the way, just just as a reminder, I'm in New York. You're in Ohio. We're working together. There's no latency. There's no. It just feels great. I just this is this is why I love working with this stuff. Um, and uh, it, it just to me, it's total science fiction that we're able to do this on a regular browser with, you know, I'm on a laptop. It's a 
power book, the MacBook. It's insane, absolutely surreal. Okay, still no questions? Uh, yeah, actually, we have one. Uh, Hit it. So our first question is from Matthew Cullis, uh, and he says, do you ever EQ the parallel compression? Yeah, so you got to be very careful about that. I think that parallel compression, um, it's difficult to mix a record today without parallel compression. And I'm sure that Mick Gazowski would disagree and so all George Meissenberg too. But, um, but let's just put it this way. For me, uh, it is difficult to mix a, a record today without parallel compression because that is the sound that everybody's used to. It's a very dense sound that is very difficult to get with just direct tracks unless everything is recorded so dense that, you know, I'm, am I going to use parallel compression on a jazz record? Probably not. But on something like this, you saw what it does right away, right? It's very different from just pushing the fader. But you got to be careful what you do. And so it is really important, I think, to... Here's an, uh, um, a way to think about parallel compression that may help. What do you need it for? Do you want density or do you want punch, right? So if you want density then you're going to want something that doesn't have a lot of transients like I did on the whole mix. Like you're going to kill the transients, have a very fast attack and a fairly slow release. And that's going to create this kind of ribbon sound that you can just tuck under. Cool. If you want punch, then you use a slow attack and then uh, a fairly fast release. Then you're going to have a very punky version of the signal that you can tuck under and give it more attack. Cool. Okay, great. great. So this thought process of what do I need, what do I want, what is my end result, you can apply to EQ too. Would I EQ the parallel compression um, stem? Uh, yeah, if I'm not happy with what it does tucked under the exist existing signal. So for example, say I want to parallel compress an 808, and the fact that the 808 has so much bottom freaks out the compressor, or it's just gooey in a way I'm not interested, then I will EQ the return from the parallel compression. However, you got to be really careful because if you EQ, especially in the bottom, you're going to introduce a phenomenal amount of phase issues, right? Uh, because the minute you put an EQ in, especially if you high pass, uh, all of a sudden your phase flips. And, um, and then you can end up with a lot of holes where if your return is at one level, you get a certain sound, and then your return is at a different level, you don't get the same sound louder. You get another sound because of the phase relationship between the two signals. So yeah, you can EQ, and I do it uh, in cases where I have to, like for example, on vocals. Um, I would probably, you know, maybe push the high end of a vocal return if that's what I need more of. But you got to be very careful about phase. So that's why, for example, if you use Pro-Q3, you could put it in linear phase and have a lot less of these issues. Or at least you can EQ to your heart's content without being too stressed uh, over what it does. That would be my advice, I think. Yeah. 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 I stand by this statement. I endorse this campaign. All right, let's go back to the music. Good question. See, the thing in those, a lot of those questions, uh, do you, would you put reverb on a bass drum? Uh, do you EQ your return uh, of the parallel compression? Uh, would you do, uh, would you put an LA 2 on the mix bus? That kind of stuff. Those questions, everybody has those questions. I used to have those questions a long time ago in a land far, far away, um, before Darth Vader blew up the, the star. I used to ask myself those questions, and those questions come from A, too much reading the shit online, number one. Number two, not having a clear picture in your head of what, what your end result needs to be, which is not, doesn't mean that uh, you're not good. That doesn't mean that you haven't formed that taste yet, right? If you already know what you want your drum parallel return to sound like, you will not ask yourself the question, um, do, do I EQ this? You will ask yourself that question if you do the parallel compression, you not getting quite the results you want. Maybe it's a compressor, maybe it's because you should EQ it, you don't know. 
And because you don't know, you ask yourself the question, which is the sign of curiosity, which is the sign that you're going to be really good at it at one point. But the 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 end the, the result is the end result of this is the more you try, the more you fail, the more you'll succeed. Because you try, you fail, you say, okay, last time I used EQ on the parallel return of my bass drum and my bass drum got really hollow, won't do that again. And that is the answer to those questions is try it. Now, of course, having someone who's done it before, like say all the mentors at PureMix, show you what they do is awesome. That's a shortcut. But that should not preclude you from trying for yourself because the shortcut is the shortcut of one situation. But with a different 808 and a different compressor and with a different weather report on a different day, in a different DAW with different delay compensation, whatever, it's not going to sound the same that what um, Andrew did or I did or Vance did. And so what's really important is to learn the principles, which is why we always strive to keep the principles forefront in everything we do at PureMix, but then apply those principles to your particular situation, which is why it doesn't matter that I'm in Fruity Loops, sorry, FS, which one is the right? FS Studio 21. It doesn't matter. What matters is Noah's mix was almost there, really good. I did like maybe five moves so far. I feel it sounds better. Um, we'll see what Noah thinks. Um, and 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 it, you know this is way better than exporting everything to Pro Tools and starting from scratch because I have his the essence of his mix with a, just a little bit of mojo ish added. Um, so that is my very long answer to your very simple question. Um, I have more for you. Oh, all right. Uh, first of all, um, Luke blew up the dust star, not Darth. That was pointed out to us in the chat. And that, that is, you know, I agree. And if you want it to be punchy, add some compression, go for it. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then also, um, Yankee Slinker asks, uh, can Fab talk about getting all the tracks to sit in space, uh, like with Z depth with either one or several reverbs? Yes. yes. We have a video for that, um, called creating space with reverbs. <laughs> but there's also uh, how to listen, um, that covers some of that. How to listen reverbs, which is that, that one was a, a lot of work to put together. Um, but yes. Let's ask ourselves what creates depth when you are in real life. Okay, so if you get in a place that has all carpet on the walls, maybe you, you're insane and you're in an asylum and it has carpet on the wall so you don't hurt yourself. Um, not you, but someone. Provoke Provo you. You have, you're going to feel like you're in a non-space, right? Then say you move to Notre Dame in Paris and you say the same words and now you're in a gigantic space. And the reason why you're a gigantic space is because your voice hits the walls and gets back to you. We know that. So how most recordings are, and it's kind of fitting, most vocal recordings, for example, sound like they were recording an insane asylum. There is nothing on them. It's all very dry. Uh, and it's like this carpet on the walls and they have a shirt with the uh, sleeves in the back. Cool. Um, how do you create the backspace? Well, you have to fake the idea that the singer was in a room that had a wall far away, right? So, um, so a hall would be great for that. Or um, maybe um, an office, like a really short room. So you can have this vibe that there's there's something behind the singer. And that usually is early reflections or a short reverb. And then uh, the hall will give it the idea that you're in a room that has a lot of height, right? So this is this is how you do it. And now how do you, so that's the basic thing with reverbs, right? Then maybe sometimes it's not, um, it's not reverb you need because you don't want the stuff to be wet. You want the stuff to feel like it's a little further away, um, but, but not wet. So to do that, first there's the mighty mighty fader, because you know in real life if something is far away, it's quieter. Somebody screaming at you from 60 feet away is pretty quiet. It's just the tone of it is screaming, but it's quiet. Let's, let's think about that for a second, right? 
Another thing is the further away people are, the darker the, the, the sound is because the air attenuates the high end first. So if you want to make something feel a little pushback in the mix, just a high shelf down a little bit, or maybe a low pass filter a little bit. All of a sudden, things are going to feel a little muffled. Thus, your brain is going to think, oh, it's far away. Um, obviously, you could have something very dark, extremely loud in your face is not going to sound far away. No, because this is psychoacoustics, of course, um, you have to create an environment for it to work the way it's supposed to work. So yeah, if you want, say, if you, if you want that wood block there to sound like it's far away, I would make it darker and lower it a little bit in the mix and it's going to sound far away. Also, you can use the pan. For some reason, and this is my taste, I feel like I can place things in the stereo, in, in the front, in the Z field better if they are not in the center. Usually because in the center, there's the vocal, the bass, and the bass, and all the info important information. So I could do more interesting tricks with stuff on the side. That is my long-winded answer to your very good question. Um, and now I forgot where I was. Let's get back into the song. Uh, I say that I am fine, but it's worse. So on the chorus, you have this distortion voice that comes in. And I think that's what I'm going to use to make the chorus lift a little more. I'm going to raise that distortion voice, and then I'm going to give it a little bit of like bounce, just a little bit of sauce using whatever. Which one do you recommend? Delay 2, delay 3, delay 4, delay 8. Um, I, I'd probably use delay 2. That's what delay I normally two. use. It's really simple and yeah. Simple is great. I love it. So, uh, right click. Here we go. Fascinating. It works like no other delay I've ever worked with. It's awesome. Uh, let's try ping pong. This is going to do the trick. Can you hang with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, and then I still feel there's a little some, 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 some technical term on the 808. Let's see here. That's great. Um, so I think it's then the kick. So there's a little 60 kind of like Oh, look at that. Maybe you put it in on purpose. A hundred. Let's see if what we do if we change that. Perfect. I like it better without, but you're still great. And then I'm going to lower. Um, can I change this band type or do you need to use another band? I need to use another band. You can change the band type. I'm too lazy. Okay. <laughs> um, how do I change the cue? Like, like this. this. Great. Great. This is awesome. Right, let's see if this is better. I can feel my 
gonna I'm gonna oh yeah 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 okay cool 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 check it out so here in this context I feel that you don't need to be so brutal on the low pass on the bass drum unless it's insanely clicky we're about to find out cool other trick that may be useful to you is if you have an 808 that is this full and you want uh, it to be able to speak and the bass drum to not be in the way you can look in the 500 area there's always something unnecessary how the attack of the bass drum and the and the 808 fight but if you uh talk to 500 and they don't Cool. So let's see in the context. Be curious about the snare. Okay. Clap. Okay. Clap. This guy. I want to put a little bit of reverb on this guy. Who do you recommend? Uh, honestly, the uh, the fruity reverb too. Reverb R E E, love it. <laughs> this is awesome. Uh, delay tempo diffusion speed. Um, where's the size? Uh, up, like kind of in the middle. There you'll see a D E C. I guess it's next to the drive. Yeah, there you go. You happen to know what DC stands for? Decay. Duh. Ooh, that's really interesting. Less sweat. Let's see in the context. That is awesome. Who are these girls? <laughs> Check them out. This is great. So let's go back to them. This and I think the bus for those girls is here. Hey, Fab Tanner, up to you. Um, somebody was asking how big the 500 cut was on the 808. Good question. Thank you for asking. I have no idea. Let's go look at it. Where are you? Hi. Uh, it was the kick. That's what I thought. Yeah. yeah. Someone's paying attention. <laughs> um, the it was. How do you know? You don't know. You don't really know. <laughs> this is amazing. They were, they were like, "There's no indicator." Yep. For, what about at the top? Is it telling you something up there? Nope. 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 No. 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 It's all about. It's about. It's all about the vibe. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> this is cool. Man, this is great. Uh, can you guys tell I'm having fun? This is like a different, completely different exercise. Uh, this is cool. I hope you guys think it's cool too. Um, um, I could fall on my face. I'm still planning to maybe at one point. So let's um, let's just go uh, harmony boss. Sing the things that you go through. And so the reverb is on the lead. There's no reverb on the bus. Nope. Sorry, I cut you off. No, you're good. Uh, yeah, there's no reverb on the bus. Hmm. Is that a static, static choice? choice? 
Uh, yeah, for the most part. Okay, cool. Like it tight. And I have to, I have to respect that. Um, I mean, where I come from, we would put some reverb on the bus. <laughs> if you want but, to, be my guest. Uh, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, go right ahead. Ba, 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 ba. I'm gonna do the same thing. Is I'm gonna use the. Uh, uh, not here because you're already high passing, but I'm gonna use the uh, the console thing here to um to tuck a little bit of those that this stuff. You need this, so I'm gonna tuck it. Use the high pass further. Cool. And then maybe like you said, uh, is there another reverb or no? Um, not no. Okay, great. I love free verb, free verb. Just, you know, you don't really hear it, but it does the trick. Here we go. FX5, cute. I love the vibe of this because it's kind of like a moment in time, right? It's kind of like a movie. It starts with this uh, riff and then it's got your voicemail thing. And then it ends with the, the riff is there the whole time. But at the end, it has a different color to it. I think this is all very smart and done in a very few amount of tracks with three plugins in this uh, amazing package that is just stunning to me. Oh, wait, there's a bass I didn't hear. Hello, who are you? What? That's, what are you saying? Uh, that's layered up with uh, with a guitar as well. That's it's awesome. Tucked back in there. Oh, let me let me untuck that. I didn't even hear it. Maybe because it's at minus eighteen dBs. Let's try. It. That's just what the doctor ordered to get that chorus to lift further. Love it. Uh, cool, Rose, I heard this guy, piano. Hi, who are you? That's cool. You know that you are not worth losing. You know that you are not worth losing. may have overdone it a little bit with the bass here 
um, the new base. Cool, great. Um, I feel quite good about this. I think that we're very close to your original mix, but with a little bit of oomph. Um, and now if we look at, if we go back and look at decibel and see where we are right now on the loud part of the, of the record around 37. So I feel that first, this is, we're still within one dB of where you were. Uh, mm -hmm. So we haven't, you know, slaughtered it. Um, I feel that we should compact it a little more. So um, here, let's try this. There's a built-in limiter. Let's see what it sounds like. Well, that is bare bones. Um, let's see. I'm going to leave decibel up so you see the, the thought process of that. Um, so go to the loud power and see what's up. So you have a ceiling and then... Independent. I haven't seen that quite like this before. That's interesting. So let's keep the ceiling where it's at. is going to make the intro feel good uh, we got to make sure that we're not killing we i am not killing the uh, downbeat of the chorus This addition, the distortion vocal on the chorus is a little loud. Uh, am I, I'm not blowing you guys up on the other side of this transmission, right? Everybody is still has their ears on? Yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay, cool. Uh, so I think, I think we're good. This is not loud. I mean, it's loud, but it's not by today's standard, it's not loud. If we are, you know, your average is going to be probably minus 13 here. It's extremely reasonable. So I can send this to Mark for mastering and he's going to send me a thank you note because the song is not crushed. And then he can crush it himself. Oh no, he doesn't do that. Um, so I really dig this a lot. Let me just inspect to make sure I haven't lost anything of your vibe and also of your intention. Um, I think I may not be giving its full uh, dues to that percussion loop. Let's see. He says that you have a performance today, tonight. You are. Don't worry about it. You just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart. I feel that it should stay where it's at. Um, because the, the ring modulator thing is kind of like, I don't know. I think it's it's not as raw as the rest, so I'm going to keep it there because we need something, but I'm not going to push it. Let's listen to the hats. After the performance, if you have wish you the best, okay, love you. Bye-bye. I say that I am fine, but it's worse. A place that can be hard to find words. Just waiting for the time to fly by. Go to... I'm lowering the wrong track. Sorry, guys. I'm a professional. Don't try this at home, okay? Um, so what happened is the parallel compression of the drums made this stuff louder than it should be. You know what I mean? And I just soloed something, and I don't know what it is. Let's see. Oh, hi. Come here often? There you go. After the performance, if you have time, call us, okay? I say that I am fine, but it's worse. A place that can be hard to find. 
and in the chorus there's a second in the chorus there's a second half I dig that. Um, guitar main, the guitar after, second guitar, mute guitar. Hi. Who are you? Who might you be? The pretty melody. And you just be yourself. You know, this is a piece of cake, especially because you're doing it with your heart, okay? And just be yourself. You'll be fine. Then there's a, there's a little vocal intervention here. I don't know what it is. I want to check that out. Misc voice. That's great. I remember that. I think that sounds great. Yeah, I think it sounds really good. Well, all right. I'm glad you think so too. Um, honestly, at this point, um, because your mix was so ready, and this, these are just like holistic, 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 holistic uh, touches, that um, I feel could elevated this to the point where it's on par with the rest of the stuff that you, in this style, to me. Um, great um, questions. My yeah. dear beloved Pure Mixers and others. So got a couple. Um, first one uh, from Doctors Music. Uh, hats give me a hard time. What's the best way to soften them without losing the top? Low pass filter, baby. Uh, they give you a hard time. If you define what the hard time is, are they too bright? Make them darker. Uh, are they too loud or too soft and you can't find the right spot? Probably the wrong hat. If you can't change the hat, then, um, then just make it feel good to you so you know what I, when i'm frustrated with a hi-hat i use the good hertz compressor uh i don't know that we have it here um it's a um good hertz is an interesting company they make comp plugins that are just very have a lot of attitude right uh or you could use uh spice rack and use the uh the lo-fi and lo-fi the shit out of it so if it's giving you a hard time, it's either it's hard to place in the mix. That could be it's either the wrong tone or you just need to to place it by um, changing the tone of it so it's not in the way um, or a level thing. Or it's the wrong sound and then you can start playing with distortion or playing with replacement to put a hat that doesn't bother you. It's not you, honey. Uh, it's always a question of what is what works for the track and what your taste is uh, in those situations um it's good to ref just listen to something in the style that you like uh or ask the artist if you're the artist ask yourself what was the inspiration for that track the inspiration for that track and then ref that and then see what did they do with that hi-hat it's all very simple um as long as you don't have the stress of not doing as good as you could do and just do what you do and then you'll get there voila awesome he says usually it's that they're too high or too bright sorry too bright yeah, yeah. that is um that is a thing so um you can low pass it if you do that it's pretty brutal um or you could shelf it so you put a take a shelf any eq you like put a shelf and just lower it and it's going to feel bad because once you have something that's bright, when you start making dark, you're like, no, nah, that can't be it, right? Because your brain loves bright. Um, but the thing is that you do that in the track. Don't solo it and don't judge it. Just low pass it, let it be. And then if an hour from now in your mix, you feel that the hi-hat's too dark, then you unshelf it a little bit. And if you feel that, the, and then if you don't think of the hi-hat anymore, then you just nailed it. Awesome. Um, also, more clarity on Darth Vader. Uh, he blew yes, up please. Alderaan. It's very really important. Yeah, he blew up Alderaan with the Death Star. <laughs> That's the one I meant. That's the one I meant. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Yeah, it's crucial. The question is, what was his bass drum setting? 
Because <laughs> especially the EQ. Why was Darth Vader base drum EQ setting when he blew up that star? That is the question that's been keeping me up at night for decades. Awesome. What else? Okay. Um, something tells me it was very dark. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. All right. Uh, Bruce Edwards, uh, there's a lot of atmospheric, wide, phasey stuff going on in this track. Do you ever listen in mono to make sure there are no major issues? Absolutely. I didn't today. Uh, but, um, you know, after a while of doing this, if you do it long enough, you kind of know. I don't know how to explain that. So, and, and, well, this, no, that's not true. I know how to explain that. If you do this long enough every day, you will have in your body the sound of something that bit you in the ass two years ago that sounded that same way and it was a problem if that makes sense but it's a very good point um i have here a single overtone and I, I didn't check on the overtone because i'm in such a unfamiliar environment that i'm like not doing my usual stuff which is part of the point here uh, but let's check it out i'm gonna listen to it on my tiny little speaker Say that I am fine, but it's worth Exactly perfect. Let's see how the chorus. Pretty perfect. The only thing I hear here that I don't, I didn't pay attention to before, and I'm gonna hear again now that I'm going back on my keys, is I feel that the. Whichever the brightest component of the backbeat on the chorus is too loud. Let's see. Dude, um, let me place it. Who's this? to you too. I was maybe a little brutish here. But yeah, good question. Here's your answer. I always listen. When I'm not uh, playing one on TV, uh, I always, li I spent about half my time on a mono orotone. Um, it's a good way to not be tired because it's quiet. Uh, so you can mix for 12 hours. And then you can listen loud from time to time to make sure you're not kidding yourself and also to know what's going on before below 100 hertz and um and yeah so i feel that it's it's working right now i also okay. tend to listen on headphones do a pass on headphones too um on my medze or on the um these are medze elites because i know someone's going to ask these are medze elites they're great um or on the apple um airpod twos because that's what people listen to music on at least that's what 90 percent of my clients listen to music on so might as well listen to what they're going to hear so i listen on those on those things too and that's you know i tend to i tend to do okay that way uh on the monitoring front people are wondering if you're using psi audio speakers these days uh, so we have psi audio speakers at flux um, I don't have them in this room. We have a pair of 21s in the um, in the inspiration room. We have a pair of 25s in the dangerous room, and we have a pair of 23s in the transporter room. And they are kick-ass. They're really, really great. They're um, all analog, um, very accurate. The, the soundscape is amazing, and they get loud as hell which is exactly what we need for those rooms. Uh, me, I fell in love with the keys. And so right now I'm mixing on keys, which are key three, they are a German company. Uh, PSI is a Swiss company. So I guess you have to be in Europe to make good speakers or something. Um, I don't know, I don't know. Don't quote me on that. But uh, they're very different kind of speakers, the PSI and the keys. I love them both for me, for, for my personal, journey right now the keys work for me and um, so that's what i'm using right now and then we have psis tracking on psis is awesome we love tracking on psis too and uh, stelios is working on is producing on um 
on a pair of 21s in inspiration is getting really great results and the translation is great so voila the answer to that question and an orotone we have orotones in every room cool. what else uh, next one is from matthew uh do you pan with the set panning plan or do you do it uh as you mix and go with the flow I don't, I, I have to apologize. I do not know what a set panning plan is, is or means. Like if, if you were like an LCR guy. Or... Oh, no, I no, I've never been really, I, I, no, I don't know. No, I just pattern it where it feels good. There are no rules to that. And I know there's a, a, a train of thought that there are rules about LCR that are derived from when the console didn't have a continuous pot, uh, pot. They, you could just do left, center, or right, because it was a switch, not a pot, and that some people love the sound of those records. I do. Uh, but I really don't think that the sound of those records, the reason why we like the sound of those records is because of the panning. Uh, I think the, there are other reasons to that. Not, of, not all of them musical. And so uh, the panning for me is fully intuitive i never look at what i do i just move it until i like it awesome uh doctress has a question a uh, vocal question are they high passed at around 100 hertz curious how to set vocals into a mix better i tend to find that these are the most difficult things to get right other than bass yeah i agree um so i don't know where they high pass and i don't think oh no this thing tells you where it high passes right you high passed it at what is it? 136. But I venture to say that it doesn't matter what a number is. What matters is, does it feel good when you high pass it? So one way of doing it is you high pass your vocal, you high pass your vocal while the track's playing, you high pass your vocal. And then as long as you don't have that feeling of dread in your body, you keep going towards the, you keep high passing. And that moment you start feeling bad and you stop and you back up a little bit. Try that. If it feels good, it's good. Uh, if if your room is um, not the best and you do that and then you go listen to it elsewhere after and the vocals are too thin, then you come back and you undo it a little bit. Next time you'll know. Um, so that's that. To make the vocals sit in a mix, most of the time has nothing to do with the vocals. It has to do with the rest of the mix. If you start your mix with the vocal, which I, if you have that issue, I recommend you do that. And you just keep your vocal on and do whatever it takes to never turn it off. Not, not hitting the mute button usually works. Then you just put the stuff around the vocal. And then you will never have a problem placing the vocal in the mix because the vocal would have been there the whole time and you have placed everything around the vocal, which technically that's what it is because the vocal, nobody walks away from listening to the song, singing the hi-hat line. If, if you know someone like that, I want to meet them. Most of the time, you walk away thinking of the lyric, or if you're a nerd like we all are, because we're on this channel, we are nerds, um, thinking maybe of like how cool the bass drum was, or the structure of the song, or maybe the pocket, or how hard it hit, or the special return effects and stuff like that. But in the end, the title of the song, unless it's instrumental, the title of the song is one of the lyrics um, or uh, uh, pertains to what the lyrics are. And so we have to be focused on the vocals. That is the, the, the key. Here, because Noah's mix was really good, I didn't tear anything down, right? I just created the density and then removed, mostly removed stuff that was in the way and that's it. I didn't raise anything. I just got rid of you know, made some space by getting rid of some stuff and um, and just push the distortion a little bit on the voc on the chorus to make the chorus feel a little more. <gasps> but otherwise, nothing else. If I were to mix this song for scratch, I would start with the vocal and then I would bring in the bass drum and the bay in the 808 to make sure that I have the room for those. And then everything else is wallpaper to me. Um, that guitar, which is the backbone of the song, pretty much just sits great wherever wherever it sits. As long as it's not in the way of the vocal, it's happy. And then maybe Noah and myself would disagree. I would send him a mix and say, yo, what do you do to my guitar? Can you bring it back up? And I would be able to bring it back up as long as it doesn't stand in the way of the vocal. 
Usually when you have a problem with something that is really driving you insane and you've tried everything on that one thing, the problem is elsewhere, right? If we trust ourselves to know the basics, and if you're a premium subscriber, you know way more than the basics, then the problem is not in the execution. The problem is the concept of what the problem is. So if you zoom out and you look at your situation and think, hmm, I've been fighting with this vocal for two hours. It keeps sounding worse and worse and worse. Maybe the problem is elsewhere. Just awesome. saying. Uh, Doctor uh, says more of a curious question. Is that a UASD1 that you're using? We yes. It's know your my baby. Chain. <laughs> and how are you getting those podcast vocals? Oh, oh well, wow. you want to know something funny? We got screamed at because the vocals on the live stream were not good. So I was like, I'm going to use a technical term. Fuck that. Uh, and uh, so I just set up uh, the SD1 because I love it. And uh, and then you wanted to see my set. I mean, let me let me show you my settings. My settings are uh, first. This SD1 is connected with a what's the name of that cable? Whatever, some Swiss cable, which doesn't matter by the way. Uh, into the 512C which is a API uh, preamp that's there. And the reason why it's plugged into the 512C because it's the only preamp in my room that I can plug in like this and not have to patch it. I'm not lazy, I'm just efficient. Those are two very different things. <laughs> um, then uh, I have my trusty Teletronic LA 2 a And then um, I have the Pultec. And on the Pultec, I'm, this is the secret weapon, Pultec 5K, love of my life. Uh, and then a little bit of 10K. And uh, you know what's funny is I set it up like this. And because of the way things are set up, I couldn't hear it. So I just set it up and I called Mark on Session Wire and I said, yo, how does it sound? He's like, great, next. That's my setting. And I'm about yeah, far away from the microphone. But if you like it, I want to keep it this way because then I won't be screamed at because it's not, it doesn't sound good. There you go. Uh, where are you? Oh, you're here. So many windows, so little time. Um, yes. I think uh, let's do a last call for questions. So if you guys um, have any more questions, put them in the YouTube chat and we'll try to get to them before we're out of here. And then yes. do you want to listen one more time from the top while they think of Yeah, I want to listen to the whole song. I feel that the song is good, but I need some education. Noah. How do I print this? How does it work? Uh, I can absolutely help you with that. Wow, thank you so very much. <laughs> Thanks for calling. I can help you with this. Uh, uh, so you, for PC, it would be uh, Control A to select everything. So uh, for real, like I'd say Command A. a. Okay, great. Command Good. Yeah. Make sure it started from the beginning. The play mark. It is start from the bar one to bar one or whatever one twelve ish. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, make sure the uh, the playhead is all the way back to the beginning. Oh, that. No, yeah, it's, not. it's not. Yes, Sweet. it is. Okay. okay. And then you're going to go to File. Okay. And then Export. So far. Okay. Oh, wow. Look at those options. Yep. And Master. then you can. Oh, no, yeah. Not... That's new. That's AI. <laughs> no, not touching my file. Wave. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what do you yep. mean AI? AI. No, 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 no. Don't yeah, say it. It's okay. like it, it basically will master for you. And that's like something brand spanking new that they just added. That is like doing your own teeth. I'm not going to do it. Um, they add that after you called me. Question, question. <laughs> uh, is this, if I hit save now, is it going to play the song or is it offline? It'll be offline. Oh, no, we don't do that. Okay, cool. But is there a way to not be offline? uh to mm, no okay yeah. fine great so let's listen to it one more time from start to finish while people think about their questions and uh enjoy that where how do i turn the loop off because it, it starts at the beginning uh every time it gets to the end which is very oh. frustrating <laughs> uh hold down command and click on the like the timeline like where the Here? playhead would be uh a yeah. little more yeah right there there we go Fabulous. Fabulous. All right, let's listen. Hi, Sophie, my love. How are you? Um, Dad says that you were trying to call me. He says that you have a performance today, tonight, and I know you're going to do amazing. You are. Don't worry 
Awesome. I think it's awesome. I, I really dig it. Um, like all things like this. Uh, actually, you know, I heard one thing. What did the guy say? Just one more thing. Um, uh, I think that on the verses, the, the backbeat is a bit loud, and I don't know which one it is. I don't know which one it is. Let me check it out. This guy. That's the guy. He's too loud in general. Um, lower him. I say that I am fine, but it's worse. A place that can be hard to find words. Just waiting for the time to fly by. Go to. I think that's good to go. I'm going to print it and then um, and then you can send me your, your feedback. And if you need some changes, I will do them. Um, my pleasure. Thank you so much for um, lending your song to us for this uh, exceptional exercise. Um, yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, and to everyone watching, um, thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, I'm supposed to say this. You ready? Subscribe. Um, and this is my YouTube face for the thumbnail. And um, don't forget that if you're a um, Pure Miss subscriber, as of this week, you have full access to the amazing Session Wire so you can work remotely with people uh, and for it to feel just like if you were on the other side of the glass in a normal recording studio, which is pretty awesome. And if you're a um, Session Wire subscriber, congratulations, you just got yourself a Pure Mix account. Uh, with all the goodies that come with. 
uh, you know, Mixtank, all the plugins, and all the education that we've been putting together for you for many, many years. Um, and that's it. That's it. Mark, do you have anything to add? I think that that's it. Um, somebody asked if we're coming to NAM. Yes. yes. And we're probably going to throw um, some sort of a, what people would call a party. Look us up. All right. Ciao, everyone. Thanks for watching. Cool. Thanks, Noah.